Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 29. In this tutorial we are going to look at bringing over some information from our previous scene, so our gun, our UI, our uh, ammo, stuff like that. And we're also going to look at shooting these vases or bases, however you want to pronounce it, and smashing them. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything about video game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So it's actually fairly easy to bring over information from a previous scene and we actually already have the gun theoretically because we have the FPS controller and in the FPS character we already have the M9. So we have to remember that when we come through the door we'll have already got the gun. So that gun can always be active on screen. So we don't need to worry about having to work any mechanics to pick that up again. So I want to save that scene and then head back to scene one which was the first scene, or the one with the zombie that smashes through the door. And from this scene, we're going to take a couple of things. So let's take, first of all, the ammo. Because when we go over there, we're going to need ammo again. But don't worry, we'll eventually uh, work mechanics so as they come over when we have this scene. I wouldn't worry about it at all just for now. I want to just bring the ammo over so we've got something in there so we don't have to go through this scene to get to the next scene. It's just kind of future-proofing in a way. So we need to take the ammo box, we need to take the canvas, and we need to take the event system. So copy those game objects, head to scene two, and just paste them. There we go. So obviously we're going to have to move the ammo box into position because currently it is outside of the range of where we can walk. So I'm just going to go back inside and bring the ammo somewhere into the middle of the room. Maybe probably about there. Is that good enough? I think that's good enough, isn't it? Okay, so probably best to drag it out of the floor as well since it's glitching into the floor. Well, there we go. And I'm going to save that scene and press play. And let's just make sure all the mechanics we brought over work as intended. So if we press play. There we go. So we've got our gun, but we can't actually fire it. So let's pick up some ammo. And it's not actually done what I thought it would do. So let's just check our ammo box. Uh, ammo pickup. Oh, of course, we need our global ammo object as well, so we can actually see what's going on. Of course, so I'm going to head back to the first scene. It would actually help, wouldn't it? Ammo control, that is the one we want. So let's take ammo control, head to scene two, paste that in as well. And that should automatically fill. Well, it doesn't, so we'll, let's add that in. If we'd have brought the canvas over at the same time, it would have automatically filled it. So that's not to worry. We just need to add in ammo display to there. And let's try that out once more, and then we can get around to shooting stuff. There we go, there's our ammo. So, what we want to do is let's take this vase right here and be able to shoot it, and it breaks. We want it to just shatter. Um, and I've just noticed a glitch there, which I've been meaning to fix for many, many tutorials now, where the muzzle flash is still left on. I know, guys, I know you mentioned it many tutorials ago, I've just not got around to fixing it. Uh, but we, I, we will do when we go through a nice bug fixing section. So we want to be able to smash this vase. And the way we're going to do it is actually really clever because it's not this vase we're going to shoot. It's actually a fully rendered one. And what I mean by that is it's not split into the different sections. However, we are going to actually add the different sections on this with a rigid body. That will give it the effect of smashing or crumbling. So if we go to add component, type rigid body or just rig and it will appear right there. So what will happen now is when we actually start the scene, they will just collapse. As you can see, they've just shattered, which is fine. That's exactly what we want. We're now going to replace that with a fully designed one. So it's going to be, I think, is it this one? I think it is that one. And we need to make it the same size. So let's have that as 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0 0.2. I think it's the same size. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a uh, light so we can actually see what's going on because it's a little bit dark. 
I'm sure we added a test light at one point, didn't we? I can't quite remember. Okay, so I'm not quite sure which one it is, you know. It is Vase Broken 2. So do you think it's that one we should use instead? Or is that the exact same one we just used? I think it's the same one, isn't it? Okay, I should have rehearsed this really, shouldn't I? So it's going to maybe this one. I'll get this right one day, guys. Okay, well, I think it looks to be... It's, it's one of these anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically align it to be round about the same. You kind of work this as, as best you can. I mean, don't spend too much time doing what I'm doing now. I've, I'm just wasting time right now. But the idea is what we're doing is we've got our entire vase, vase, whatever you want to call it. And from there, we're actually going to replace it with the broken one. So what we need to do is encase that in its own actual um, box collider. So if we take, uh, in fact, we'll add it as a cube. Because the cube gives us the ability to actually create a better prefab from it because the cube can then be the actual collider rather than the object because we'll need to get rid of the object ultimately. So what I'm going to do is expand the cube over both of these vases. So we'll increase it to 0.3, uh, 1.3 and 1.3. Uh, it's just peeking out a little bit there, but it doesn't matter too much. And I'm going to rename that as vars001 and inside that I'm actually going to place those two vases so the first one and then the second one drag and drop those into there and then turn off the mesh renderer and then turn off the broken vase so that can disappear so the idea of what we're doing here is when we detect that we've shot this vase which will be detected by that cube we instantly turn this off and then instantly turn on the broken one so it gives the impression of it being shattered. There's also something else that we can do to it as well to make it kind of give an explodey kind of effect. Explodey, is that a word? Um, but um, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to do it now so you can have it if you want it. So inside that cube, right click 3D object and sphere. And then that sphere can sit round about there turn off the mesh renderer and then turn it off and then i'm going to rename the sphere to uh, just say explode effect and it's a really simple mechanic that will just make it look like it just goes shatter everywhere so the next thing we need to do is create a script now we have to be careful what we do here simply because um the whole idea of what we've got with our guns so far is when we shoot, we actually send, we're looking for something called damage zombie. And we'll probably change this to be more generic as we go along. The only reason it's called damage zombie right now is because the first thing we shot at was a zombie. So if we go to its zombie death, so I'm going to open up the zombie death script. Try and explain this best I can as well. So we'll kind of be taking a little bit from this script, um, mainly the idea of being able to receive from the weapon. So basically a line or two. But I just kind of want to go over it to explain why it's damaged zombie and why we do need to change it when Visual Studio eventually loads. When Visual Studio eventually loads. Oh, honest. Oh. Do you know what? I swear it takes longer and longer every time. I feel like I waste half my life waiting for Visual Studio to open up. I really do. Okay, so. Oh, it's preparing solution now. Good Lord. Okay, so. Remember, guys, this is attached to the zombie, and it is this method here that basically means that we get to harm the zombie. So we need to take this exact method and place it into a brand new script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder in the scripts folder and call it uh, environment. So anything we deal with the environment, we should put in this folder. So right click, create C sharp script, bars, break. And then 
when that opens up in Visual Studio, we just need to copy over from the zombie death script that method. So take that and let's place it. In fact, let's get rid of void start void update because we don't actually need them. Let's place it there. And we are going to need to declare a couple of variables here. So obviously we're going to need to declare the vars, the broken one, and the sphere object. So public game object fake vars, semicolon, which is the fully rendered one, the one that doesn't have the breaks in it. And then public game object. And that's going to be a broken vars or vase. How do you pronounce it? Is it vars or vase? I think I say vars. Public. And then it's game object. And then we'll just call this sphere object because that's the one that's going to give it that shatter effect. So basically, when we receive this damage zombie, uh, we'll keep that in for now because I guess the damage amount may come in handy at some point. But what we need to do is get rid of that line. And let's say start coroutine and then we can call this anything we want but obviously it should be sensible so i'm going to call it break bars open close bracket close bracket semicolon that means that we then have to create i enumerator and that will be break vars open close bracket open curly bracket so in here the first thing we need to do is disable that game object so this dot game object dot get component and in spiky brackets box collider open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon the reason is we don't want to continue to be able to smash that pottery up and make it just glitch because it will glitch at the same moment we need to say fake vars dot set active false semicolon Reason being, we want to turn off that fully textured, fully rendered whatever vars, and at the same time, turn on the broken one. So, broken vars dot set active true semicolon. Now, this is where you can uh, have the whole turning the sphere object on and off to give it the shatter effect. Uh, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to show you it without that sphere object and then show you it with the sphere object and you can determine which one you want. But I'm still going to have yield return new wait for seconds 0.05f semicolon. And I'm going to save that script. So just to make things clear here as well. The reason this is in a coroutine is because of that sphere object. If you don't want the sphere object, you don't have to create this coroutine. You just don't have to create it. The reason it is as a coroutine for the sphere object is because we turn it on then off real quick, like in a short phase of time. So we need to use the yield return new wait for seconds bit. That's why we use the coroutine if we are using the sphere object. So either way, let's now Put that script onto our vars right there. And then we just need to add in fake vars, which is the one that is on, uh, the broken vars, and then the explode effect, which is the sphere object. I'm going to save that scene and press play. And let's check this out. Hopefully we get the desired effect. Yes, I know it is very bright right now. That's because we turned on a light. So let's try this out. There we go. So, one more time. I think the, that first it didn't work first time it's because it's clipping kind of through and we didn't fully shoot it. There we go. So that is how we shoot the vars. Now, let's try it with that extra sphere object to show you the different effect that we can achieve here. And then we say sphere object dot set active true semicolon. Another yield, return new, wait for seconds, and then we turn it off. So it's just three extra lines of code and save. So what should happen now is when we shoot it, it should just shatter, like, wow, just go everywhere. And yes, that is the technical term, wow, go everywhere. 
So, let's pick up some ammo. And let's shoot the bars. So you can see the effect it has there kind of just throws it a bit further out. And you can actually change the size of that by changing the size of the sphere. So if we have, let's say, 1.2 by 1.2 by 1.2, it should give us a little bit more range when it explodes. Oops, I didn't pick up the ammo. It would help if I did. There we go. So the wider, bigger that sphere, the more it will shatter. So I'm actually going to not have the sphere as big. So I'm going to reduce it, just keep it as one. Or should I even have it on at all? I don't know. It's, well, it, it's up to you guys at the end of the day, really, isn't it? It's your game that you're developing. Uh, so I'm going to turn that directional light off, get rid of it. And let's try this one more time with the effects that we're supposed to have. Oops, so I've done it again there. Okay, so it's shattered. Perfect. So, what you should do at this point, guys, is make sure your box collider actually covers... There's nothing peeking out because I have a little bit peeking out there, so that kind of stops the uh, gun shooting it. Best way to do it is just make that cube a little bit bigger. That's all you really need to do. Uh, so next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll add some sound effects to it. So like the, a breaking sound effect. And we'll also probably deal with um, some velocity as well. So as when it hits the ground, it still makes a noise. And we'll also put a key inside our bars ready for our puzzle. So guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.